part is um, there's nothing hidden. What is revealed is what heaven permits. And in the word of God, it says, John replied, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. So heaven's will is in all completion of how we live in this life. That is going to be the benefacting principle that you always have to remember, um, even in the choices and reasons and consequences and uh, living that you go on in, right? And the second part, the New Testament is the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This testimony is the spirit of prophecy. In Revelations 19.10, it says, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, all these things, like, I don't know. Um, I It's not like I it, I read the Bible and then that came out. It came out and then I'm like, what is, like, you know, show me the way. And then they, uh, they lead me to, to the Word of God. So, and three, Jesus spoke to those people in parables. Those parables are meant for us. His words was for the last generation. So parables, okay? Para, it's relating to, uh, characterized by being two positions in the same that are separated by two. Alongside of, beside, near, resembling, beyond, apart from, and also abnormal. Parables are stories used to illustrate multiple principles. But when you have par ables, right? It imparts a portion of what needs to be done in order to reap the benefits. Side-by-side -side applications. For today, it is used to get your spirit and the Holy Spirit to walk in step, close beside, and even to cast. This is reflecting above, so below. Y equals X squared, right? Any image on one side of the vertex has a mirror image on the other side. It is a crystallization of your body spirit, mind, and heart in the manamorphosis of your spiritual becoming to make ready for the kingdom of heaven. And that right there is also, that equation um, is a parabola. And as you know, a parabola is uh, reflecting on equal sides no matter where your vertex is, right? Um, so that's what the parable means, that when Jesus was speaking to those people, his spirit of prophecy, which is foretelling the future, was for our ears and our hearts to then uh, be virtualized to the truth so that you could then begin to walk and live the way that he was trying to instruct, right? Um, the fourth part, prophecy shares root link in etymology to sapience, meaning wisdom. The spirit of wisdom was in the beginning with God and the word, among other things. It was also the word. So, as we know, we're called human sapiens or homo sapiens, right? Sapiens means wisdom, the ability of body accordance through knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. These are applied while seeking perfect action to keep virtues in sequence and consequence to patterned outcomes, possessing or expressing great sagacity. So sagacious is keen in sense perception. In Latin, a sagas means prophetic, which is the ancestor to our verb, which is seek, right? So, um, as you know, you seek first the kingdom of God, and sagas, it also looks like sage, which is like a, pre like a holy person, right? <clears throat> and so, um, when you are able to have the sapiens, what you have is this thing called sapere vedere. And there are a couple of people who have changed history that everyone knows about. And one of these people is Leonardo da Vinci, right? He had sapere vedere. And sapere vedere, what that means is how to see. So in the tree structuring of seeking, right? You have insight, you have foresight, and you have hindsight. Sapere so Vedere is knowing how to see. So instead of being stuck in the tree, you are outside of the tree looking at it as a whole. And because of that, you can see the potentials in everything. And that's what made him such a genius mind. He could get the, the simplest object and see such great potentials in all aspects of it. And another genius that had that um, was Tesla. That's why um, all of his contraptions that he could just imagine them in his mind and fix them right there. He didn't have to build a blueprint, see how it works, and then fix the foibles in the actions that uh, he had just created. He could create in the actions in his mind. He had Sapere Videre, knowing how, how to see. And because of that, uh, what he, he was in the, uh, the, the gravitas, the, the, uh, the, the foundation of seek, right? And as you know, seek that is a verb that is to search, kind of, right? And sagas, um, 
almost like a sage. So you're looking for knowledge, you're seeking wisdom, you're seeking understanding, you're seeking uh, guidance, you know, and those who seek will find in eventually if you keep persisting and persevering to trying to find it. And that's where we get homo sapiens. But if you think about the this this scientific nomenclature that we have put on the human being, the species of who we are, these these humans, right? Um, it, do you think that we are really wise, or do you think that we're we are as sapiens? Uh, I think that we are in the becoming of becoming sapiens, and some people are waking up, and that's why uh, in the crystallization of this metamorphosis. And um, as, as everyone knows, there's metamorphosis, right? Um, metamorphosis uh, is a is a word that I just made up or <laughs> was given to me. It's about the the changing of your internal structuring of your your being it is the changing like how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly it has to go into a cocoon a crystallization and in that sense it breaks down its entire dna structuring into a goop which is called plasma it's not dna dna it is na dna d a a d d d it's like all scattered and then it reforms itself and that's why it comes out a completely new thing whereas you have um the metamorphosis or uh, metamorphosis of uh, the tadpole to the uh, frog, but it's almost the same thing. But the difference is that's external, right? And that's what um, we have already uh, made into our reality. We're so used to the external aspects of life that we have forgotten how to metamorph ourselves so that we can catch up and become even greater and therefore change the world into the paradise of heaven that we are supposedly supposed to be coming into because we are meant to be homo sapiens wisdom right not just knowledge but wisdom um the fifth part is the mark of the beast is generation 999 the covenant of love to 1000 generations is soon fulfilled all oaths bound in heaven and on earth will then come to term so this means okay so the mark of the beast everyone is aware of that word that that sound bite right revelations 13 16 through 17 it says and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark on their right hand or in Oh, in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay? So, and Revelations 13, 18, the next verse says, Here is a call for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and that number is 666. Okay? Deuteronomy 7, verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to 1,000 generations, to those who love him and keep his commands. And Matthew 18, 18 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, going back, the mark of the beast is generation 999, and looking at the parables this parabola uh reflecting heaven and earth in reflection in image right um everything is opposite and so that's why there was uh he couldn't just say this is what it was he was like it looked weird to him because he was seeing above everybody during this time so he was in heaven using the eyes of heaven looking down on earth knowing very well that he had the eyes of man in reality. So his brain structuring, the reality and his rationalization was getting crossed, right? And if you have, it was like he was seeing the last generation, generation 999, the beast generation um, from heaven, but with the uh, reflecting, it looked like 666. If you have a 999 and you get a mirror and you put it like this, it looks like a 666, but... At the same time, it's like, what? Um, some of them look different, and that right there was the cognitive dissonance that he was seeing, this mark of the beast, which is, the they already, the, they were also there in the beginning, so they saw all the pieces, they know about this prophecy, and when I say they, I mean the principalities who are trying to, uh, the, the, the dark entities, right, out there. They know about the prophecies and being fulfilled. And so to register the beast of cognitive dissonance, the big, huge beast that comes up from below, in the, from the depths of the ocean to swallow Jonah, you know, put him into a deeper darkness of sleep, of uh, uh, 
thought that is incomplete but lived as though it is a complete thought. It is a lie and that right there is the mark of the beast. It is the darkening of the mind, right? And so what uh, the darkened principalities who are fighting so hard to, because they already know that the victory has already been won, right? And But prophecies need to be fulfilled. What they did was cause more of this cognitive dissonance during this time of generation 999 by implementing the the marks in your head and in your your hand inside your head inside your hand and therefore uh it's a reality a lot of people are um associating it with uh, microchips and all that stuff right microchips inside the hand and in the head and it's unnatural but it's uh, you're going to need this because a cashless society is coming up and, uh, and this is very, it's true. It's happening right now. They have these things called grinders. Um, uh, and these are people who actually put technology into their bodies to biohack themselves and they're turning into cyborgs almost, right? And they can control smart, smart houses and sm smart businesses just with their, their hands. And it's going even greater than that. And in the sense, um, when it comes to the the fake light of enlightenment that the destructive angels are um, going to see or look for us to know who to not destroy during this time, um, that's what the prophet who was having this vision and revelations about this mark of the beast, that's what he was seeing. That's why it was looked weird to him. There was something different. That's why he said, the, the uh, man of wisdom know this. It's the number of man. It's also the number of the beast, you know, and this is what it means. And so it's many fronts coming into play. But the, the very uh, heart, the core of this mark of the beast is not anything outside of ourselves, and it's not anything alien that is put inside of ourselves. It is something that has been here since a long time. It's called cognitive dissonance, okay? So the next part um, is six. The man who witnessed this vision was looking below from above. It looked weird, oddly formed. That is why he spoke. Man of wisdom know this. This is mere reflecting in opposites. The number 666 was the mark of the beast generation, the last generation. He saw 999 of the generation, and it looked like 66. That is why he didn't quite comprehend it. The physical markings that he saw that looked differently from the other markings was the mark of the beast of this world, doing what it can to keep many within the true mark of the beast, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is displayed in this vision as expectations followed through to keep many in deceptive half-truths, never to realize the whole truth. Were the elect unable to be deceived and manipulated, no one would know this. Okay, so the man that they're talking about, this was John, the son of Zebedee. Zebedee means my gift, right? Um... Zebedee was the father of the apostles James the Great and John, who had this vision, um, and he was the wife of Saloma. Um, his wife had asked Jesus um, if her two sons, their two sons, John and James the Great, um, could have a seat of honor in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus had replied, like, I, I don't think you know what you really ask, and uh, I cannot grant that. Like, only uh, my father can grant that type of, uh, you know... Um, um, coronation, that type of uh, glorification. Um, but the thing is, you also have to understand that whenever you are at a, a, a level of leadership, such as being a king over kingdom, a crown is not something that is is easy, right? It's a burden. A heavy lays the head that wears the crown. And so that's what he was saying. Like, uh, I don't think you know what you asked. They're not going to be able to drink from my cup. But if it's in the Father's will, and on earth and is in heaven, then his will be done. That's what, that's what will happen, and that depends on pretty much your son, um, John and um, James the Great. And so whatever they do here will be bound in heaven. Uh, that's what it means by whatever is bound here will be bound in heaven, whatever is loosed here will be loosed in heaven. And so when you live your life according to a heavenly structuring of virtue... Um, in the way that God would want and expect it through your own free will, then you know that your, your, um, blessing, your, your reward is going to be great. And it could very well be, <laughs> you're be, be able to sit, um, at the right or left of Jesus Christ, the King, you know, the son of God, um, that all depends on you. So that's what he was saying, right? Um, and then... 
It says the physical beast marking was done purposefully by the principalities in order for cognitive dissonance and giving us the expected sense of what the mark was. Not